welcome to my channel. If you are clicking on this video and you're like, who the hell is this person? And Makeup Struggles sent you here. Welcome, my name is Karen Harris. I can't believe I get to say this out loud, but today I'm collaborating with Makeup Struggles. Oh my gosh. I am such a fan girl of hers, you guys. I feel like I found her channel a year or two ago and I have been hooked ever since. I know she took out some of her longer talking videos from when she first started uploading, but they're so good. And I used to literally watch them like on repeat, like the stuff she did about brand trips and sponsored videos and like all that great content. She's still putting out great content and I am literally in shock that she collabed with me. Basically, I was feeling inspired on election day and I have posted on my Instagram, I was like, hey, small content creators, let me know if you wanna collab because I have a small YouTube channel and it's always like awkward for me like asking people to collab because you know, you just never know if people wanna collab with you or not and obviously like Makeup Struggles channel is freaking huge so I didn't even think I could just ask her like that. So anyway, she saw my post and she's like, we've never collabed. And I was like, no, we haven't. <laughs> and she's like, okay, we should collab. I'm like, literally died Edward, like literally fainted. I was just like, huh. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> I get to collab with Makeup Struggles. So if you guys don't know who Makeup Struggles is, I don't know what you're doing with yourself please click out of this video and go watch her channel because she's amazing um, and I love her so so much and hopefully I get to meet her someday so I just mentioned her as one of my dream collabs in my small youtuber tag video so it's so great that my youtube dreams are coming true and uh yeah anyway so I was talking to her and I was like hey like what would you you know do you have any ideas and she's like yeah so she gave me two options and the option we chose to collab on are releases I personally feel attacked by. And I love chit chatty videos, so I was like, ooh, that's so exciting. So the two criteria are releases that go against everything we love, or I love it, but I don't or won't buy it. So <laughs> I have notes, so I don't wanna miss anything. It's kinda like a live my video, but Seriously, these are releases I personally feel attacked by. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts, just keep watching. Okay, so I started writing a list as soon as she asked me to do this collab. And the first thing on my list that I personally feel attacked by is the Bretman X ColourPop collab. So the reason I feel like this was, it's a little bit of both categories. I think it goes against everything I love because I love ColourPop so much. And you guys, if you haven't seen, I did a collection video where I showed you all of my ColourPop palettes. And since doing that video, it really taught me something. Told me I have way too many ColourPop palettes and they don't get enough use in my collection. So after I filmed that video, I decluttered five ColourPop eyeshadow palettes. And I still feel like I have too many because I never get to them. And they've launched the Lala palette, the Karuchi Brown Sugar palette, and then they just launched the Bretman X ColourPop eyeshadow palettes and like a whole collection. And when I first saw the ColourPop X Bretman collection, I was like, oh my gosh, ColourPop is finally giving us color. And I got way too excited because of the packaging. And once I looked at it, the Lit palette looked exactly like the Cute AF palette, which is their first ever palette. I'll try and put pictures up if you don't know what I'm talking about. And the Vet palette looked like a blue eyeshadow palette. And I was like, this isn't really as colorful as I thought. So I just feel personally attacked by ColourPop because I know everyone says they come out with too much stuff, but it really feels like they're coming out with a lot of stuff. And a lot of it is very repetitive. And I think it's a little bit unfair for their consumers that support them and want to buy from them because in the at the end of the day, your brown sugar palette or your Bretman Rock palette that you bought is going to look exactly like your Soul palette, your Mar palette, your Cute AF palette, palettes that aren't even like a year or two old. So that really bothers me about ColourPop. I wish they would 
put more time into coming up with new color concepts, especially with the people that they collab with. I wish the collaborators would try and come up with something different. I know he said he was inspired by his Filipino heritage and the colors on the Filipino flag. I think that's very, very beautiful. But I just feel like people, you know, at some point, $12 is still $12. $12 times two is $24. And then you always have to spend the six extra dollars to hit free shipping on ColourPop. So $30 later, you're still in the hole, you know? So as cheap as they are, I definitely feel like I'm being personally attacked by ColourPop because even though I love their formula, I don't love it enough to buy it. So the next release I feel personally attacked by is the James Charles X Morphe collab. So I actually don't really follow James Charles. I know who he is. I've seen him on Tati's channel a few times. I watched a few of his videos every once in a while when he does like a click baity esque video. I did watch his video announcing the launch of this palette. I thought it was so nicely directed. Like the amount of talent that some of these bigger YouTubers have, of course it's because they have access to editors and you know probably even directors for all I know it was a very well put together video probably one of the best like launch announcement videos I've ever seen a lot of them are you know you can tell it's just a youtuber filming it editing it all by themselves but this one was like it looked professional like I loved how he had like images of looks he had created with the palette already and the little jingle it was just like a whole thing so it, it was really like selling it. It was just like, oh my gosh. Like me over here, the person that doesn't even want to support Morphe. I'm like, hmm, should I get it? Like he really, like it's so innovative. He did all the colors. You can do so many different looks. And I was like, Karen, stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Because first of all, you don't even really like Morphe. And second of all, you have 39 something palette that giant palette that they launched last year for the holidays yeah i bought it i didn't buy it when it first launched no i bought it recently when they restocked it even though it was supposed to never come back it was super limited edition um because a lot of my friends on youtube actually have that palette and they really like it so yeah i'm gonna blame that one on paulina and spooky lips and fat hips lacy they convinced me to buy it and i literally have used that palette one time and it's in the drawer and I never use it. So I was like, Karen, you don't need a big palette. Also, it's essentially like a big ass rainbow palette. And I was like, Karen, you don't need a rainbow palette. I have the Viseart Editorial Brights palette. I have the Pinky Rose palette. That's like a hella rainbow palette. I have the Electric palette by Urban Decay. I have so many bright colors and brights have like fallen off the radar for me. I was really into color in the summertime but in fall I've just been loving like the bronzers and the copper shades this green eye look I have on today I've been loving the Natasha Denona gold palette those are my babies those are home for me so I don't know why I think I need a James Charles X Morphe bright ass colored palette but I will not buy it no I'm not gonna buy it I'm not gonna buy it and I feel personally attacked by that palette so the next release I want to talk about it actually goes in the love it but I won't buy a category and this is the Suva Beauty Saffron palette now the marketing of this palette like tugs at my heartstrings if you're new to my channel you probably don't know this but I am an immigrant and the palette is themed based off having immigrant parents so I totally relate to Shayna Azad. She is the CEO and founder of Suva Beauty. Suva is the capital of the island of Fiji, I believe, and she's Indian, Fijian, and now she lives in Canada. So she has this crazy mixed background, as do I, and so I totally relate to the whole immigrant thing. They did this campaign where people were to share their stories of growing up with immigrant parents. Now, I didn't grow up with immigrant parents, but I am an immigrant, so a lot of the same, you know, cultural things, etc., etc. I know what it's like to have an Asian family, especially from like Southeast Asia. It's very culturally different from the US. So I really want this palette. And if you look at it, I'm gonna throw up a picture here. It's basically like every neutral palette ever. And so I really, really, really wanna support, but I cannot justify 
buying another red, orange, bronze palette because I have so many of them. So every day I just look at it and I watch their Instagram and I watch them play with it and I really want it but I'm not going to buy it. And it went on sale recently. It was like 25% off for Diwali and I was like nope. So I didn't buy it but it's one of those palettes I love but I won't buy because I don't need it. That color scheme has been done before. I'm actually shocked Suva did something so basic because they are so out of the box, like as far as color, they have these like water activated, like neon highlights. Like they are so far from something this basic, I'm shocked. But I can also see why they did it because obviously you wanna have like something for everyone if you're a makeup brand. And I've seen a lot of people do really unique creative things with the Suva Beauty Saffron palette, but I'm not gonna buy it. So that's that. The next thing I feel personally attacked by is the Pure Cosmetics Grinch Collection. Now, I've seen a lot of people talk about this collection and they're like, oh, this is so perfect for me because I hate Christmas and it's like Pure made me a collection. Well, that's not the reason why I feel personally attacked by this palette. I feel like this palette is really really playing on everyone that doesn't like Christmas but it still gets you involved in the holiday because you convince yourself that you need it which I think is so wrong <laughs> I think it's so wrong and I did see this palette in person and it is like hideous like it's horrendous like it's big there's like two pressed glitters in there there's a green and a red like, what do you need to put that in a palette for? And I just feel like it's like everything wrong with corporate America in a palette. They took a character that everyone loves that's basically iconic to the holiday and then turned it into a palette. So basically they created something the Grinch himself would be like, no, like, why would you buy that? That is not a Grinch voice, but I just, ugh, I just feel personally attacked by that palette. I don't, I don't know what else to say about it. The whole collection is just a hot mess. Like, you don't need it. If you want to support the holidays, just buy yourself something you need. Don't just buy it because it's the Grinch. Like, come on, okay? The next new release I feel personally attacked by is the Jouer Making Magic set. Now, I have followed Jouer's eyeshadow palettes for a long time. I actually used to be a big fan of the brand. I have a lot of their creme liquid lipsticks. Um, but I just never felt drawn to their eyeshadow palettes, they're always like a little bit mature. Like, I feel like they're going for like somebody a little older than me, but I don't really understand because I'm 30. So I feel like I should want to buy their palettes, but their shades always look so muted. And then with this Christmas palette, like, I don't understand. It like screams spring. I'm so happy that they did something different for the brand. But damn, like, it doesn't make any sense and it's all glitter and like it was available during the Sephora VIB sale so I could have bought it on sale. But even on sale I didn't want it and I was just like, why? Like, nobody, nobody wants that. Nobody wants an all glitter palette, okay? Like, I just feel like for the market that we're in, it's always nice to have a mix because then you can, you know, mix and match versus just having just all shimmers. I mean, most people probably have a matte palette they could use with it, but I just don't get why they created an all shimmer palette. So the next new release that I personally feel attacked by are these e.l.f. palettes. Now, they've done a few already. This new one is called the New Classic, and it is 18 matte satin and shimmer shades for $14. Now, I feel personally attacked by this one because of the price point. That's how e.l.f. always gets me. That's how they got me with those $10 palettes. Everyone was raving about them. They're like, oh my god, these are so good. Blah, blah, blah. I actually bought almost all of them. I stopped at the Jewel Pop and I was like, Karen, no, you don't use them. I don't care if they're $3, $10, $0. You're not going to buy any more of them. And now they've come out with even more attractive packaging with these, like, palettes because they did another one I can't remember what it's called this one's called the new classic and the thing with elf is I want to love them they don't perform I don't think their eyeshadows are 
as good as some of the higher end eyeshadow palettes and I get it if you're on a budget they're worth it but I feel like personally victimized because they have such a good price point it almost gets you because you're like hmm $14 like I could just buy that and review it for my channel so no I'm not gonna do it but yeah that's when I feel personally victimized by personally attacked by okay the other new releases i also feel personally attacked by for the same reason as the elf palettes are the milani palettes these ones are their obsessions palettes they originally came out with two then they added the pure obsessions and the bold obsessions i think and now they have these eye kits and i actually saw them at my walmart and i was like "Ooh, should i buy that like that will be a fun review for my channel and i was like karen I don't care if they're two dollars like you don't need to just keep buying stuff because of the great price point so even though I love the idea of buying something that's not very expensive that I can talk about on my channel I know it's not something that's going to go into my everyday rotation and that's $14 I'm never getting back so for that reason I am staying away from that palette okay so the next new release that I feel personally attacked by is this collaboration between Sigma Beauty and Beauty Bird. Now, I've heard a lot of Sigma affiliates get this palette and talk about it, and I can't believe it because I think of if I got this palette in PR, I would, first of all, I hope I wouldn't get this palette in PR because I would then have to say nice things about it because you can swear up and down that you can be non-biased and still get free product, but personally for me, if I get something like, you guys, the other day I was talking to one of my Instagram friends and she was like, hey, I got all this PR, like, let's see if I can match you to a foundation and I will send it to you. And I was just like, you guys, I was so touched, like, you don't even understand because for somebody like me to take time out of my day and mail somebody something is a big deal. So when somebody even mention doing that for me I like I was just like oh my god like that is so kind like I kept thinking like how kind that was for her to even offer to do that for me and so I can't imagine remaining unbiased when my friends are sending me new product to review like I feel like that would be so tough for me so that's my personal opinion so I've heard so many people that are Sigma Beauty affiliates talking this palette up and saying how much they want it and how cute it is and blah 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 and I'm like are you serious like it's like a jewel tone neutral palette and I feel like it's the born to run redone by Sigma and I haven't tried any of Sigma makeup recently I tried a palette from them like eons ago but maybe they have good makeup I'm not sure but this palette like <sighs> It's so boring. I don't understand. And it's like she tried so hard to do like marble and rose gold because marble and rose gold are like basic bitch guide number one. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. I just feel like this palette and it's $49. Are you kidding me? That's nuts. Sorry, Sigma, but that's going to be a pass. Okay, here's one I feel definitely victimized by. This is the new palette from Lawless Beauty. So they're launching their first ever eyeshadow palette, and this will be launching December 1st. So I heard Samantha March talk about Lawless Beauty. She really likes their liquid lipsticks. She's gotten a lot of her other friends to try them. I actually checked out their liquid lipstick line, and I think they had like six or seven, maybe eight shades. And none of the shades I thought would really work with my skin tone. They were very pale girl friendly which is totally fine like more power to you whatever but I saw this palette and I'm like this looks like the Kylie palettes like the bronze and the burgundy had like a baby and like I don't know I get it it's their first eyeshadow palette so I get that they want to do something like very neutral but I'm gonna guess this palette's gonna be in just under 60 or 50 dollars and I feel like it's been done before so so many times I don't know how anyone could justify buying this palette it's like a little bit of the Huda new nudes palette a little bit of every neutral palette ever like I don't know I just feel like it just goes against everything like 
I love right now. It's just like, it's so, like the shimmers would have to be so good for me to even feel like it would be worth trying. Okay, so here is something I am really loving and it's so contradictory to what I just said about the Lawless palette, but this new Dose of Colors X Mickey Mouse collab to celebrate Mickey's 90th birthday. Holy shit, that packaging is so right up my alley. I don't even really like Mickey Mouse. I just like how they did a smaller palette. It's got a highlighter in it. It's got some neutral shades. It's got the gold with black and the lipsticks look really nice. Like that one brown shade. The liquid lipstick looks so pretty. There's something about it. It's like, it's like kid makeup, but they like elevated it. So it actually makes sense for a 30 year old like me to go like, Oh, that's actually really cute. Like it's not, it's not something I would look at and be like, that looks like a kid makeup like palette. No, it actually looks elegant. It looks chic. I feel like you could still whip it out of your makeup bag and people be like, oh, that's so pretty. Like nobody would be like, ugh. Like, did you get that at Walmart? No bitch, it's Dose of Colors. <laughs> so yeah, that launches November 12th and I'm really eyeing it, but I'm not gonna buy it. I think it's beautiful, but I won't buy it. I won't buy it, I won't buy it, I won't buy it. Okay, so the next product I feel personally attacked by, because I love it, but I won't buy it, is the new Makeup Geek palettes. She launched like a butt ton of them. There's like eight of them, and then they're doing a, like a holiday one too called like Stroke of Midnight or something, and I think they're beautiful, but we've come to the point where clearly the value of Makeup Geek products, something's going on there because her palettes used to be so expensive. Like I remember the Nine Pan palettes were like 45 to 50 bucks and now she's selling them for 35 and then the other day I saw they went on sale for $28 and I was like, oh, is that like a price change? And so I was like, cool, like $28, I can see myself maybe picking up a palette or two. And then the price went back up to $35, and I was so confused. And I'm like, wait, $35 palette went on sale for $28, now it's back up to $35. Like, why did you do that? I think it was to do with the launch of her, like, clothing line called, is it Namaste or Marste or something? Anyway, cool concept, like, I get it. Marlena's a makeup boss. Like, I love, like, her story and everything to do with that, but I personally feel very attacked by her prices. Like, I bought the, you know, overpriced palettes and now I don't understand why they're cheaper. I think she's trying to clear up like the whole, like bunch of palettes. Cause I heard her say in a recent video, like she's got like 40,000 units of that packaging with like the Chevron print. So I think she created all these bundles to like sell those out. But I still feel personally victimized by her brand because I don't understand the price change. I don't understand. I don't understand like the price. Yeah, mostly the price change. I can understand like as a small business owner, she took a big hit ordering all those palettes and things like that. Like I can understand that part. So she's trying to recoup some of the loss from the Jaclyn Hill collab allegedly that never happened. But I don't feel like I need to pay for that. Like, you know, then you should be maybe offering like really maybe like 20 bucks on the palette. Well, 28 is not bad. I would pay $28 for those palettes, but not 35, especially when I know I can get them on sale. Like that was fucking shady. So yeah. Okay. So this is kind of like a genre of product. It's not really any product in particular, but I feel personally attacked by vault collections at this point. Everyone's trying to come out with a collection. I don't understand. The main ones I can think of are the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palettes. I literally bought the collection of four palettes and I have not even really used all of them. I kind of just want to declutter them. I also feel the same way about the Ace Beauté um, vault collection where they did those four palettes. I just did not like the quality. And then the most recent one for me that I can think of is the Violet Voss mini palettes. Those ones, they are, I feel like probably the size of my phone because they're 18 bucks. So they have to be pretty freaking small. I haven't really watched any videos of them. I do have Violet Voss on Instagram. So I do see people using them in like little tutorials and stuff like that. And this collection, 
just the fact that they did it as a vault collection so it like already makes you think like oh I need to buy all of them otherwise my set is not complete which is what happened with the previous two that I purchased it's just a whole scam it's just like vault collections are a scam they go against everything I love as far as makeup goes because I feel like they could have maybe done two palettes like a neutral palette and a colorful palette I don't understand that one that's like the jewel tone palette from Violet Voss. It's a weird, like the fruit sorbet one. They're all so weird. Like when you start looking at each shade, I'm like, these color combinations are a little bit strange. And then they did like the berry one and the bronze one. And I feel like the Holy Grail palette, they basically took the Holy Grail palette and split it up. The only reason I can maybe get behind Violet Voss is that the price is pretty good, like 18 bucks. They do have relatively good eyeshadows, and now that they sell at Sephora, you can technically return if you don't like it. But yeah, bulk collections in general, I feel like are a scam, and I'm finally like in tune with it, so I won't be buying any more Volt collections in the future here. I'm over the Volt collections. I feel I feel very much personally attacked by those. Okay, the next palette or the next new release that I feel personally attacked by is the Juvia's Place Warrior 2 palette. You guys, I am so sad because I have been an avid collector of Juvia's Place since I first discovered them a long, long time ago. They've really blown up since, but first of all, they made me buy the Warrior 1 palette, so I'll let them slide on that because that palette is a very neutral, very unjuvious place palette, which I get, fine, whatever. You know, they wanted a neutral palette, fine. I bought the damn neutral palette, but then they made this. Like, do you really expect me to buy an all matte palette full of shades that are already scattered throughout all of the eyeshadow palettes that I already own from you, and it's like $20? I don't think so, Juvia's Place, okay? I'm sorry, I'm not falling for it. I was so sad that they did an all matte palette because all the shades are super boring and like, I get it, okay? It's nice to have an all matte palette. I'm so bummed because I wanted to keep my collection going, but I drew a line in the sand and I was like, no. Like, I don't need another all matte neutral palette, okay, Juvia's Place? So, I feel very bummed about that because I feel like it was a series. I wish they had done, like, a few shimmers. I think you should just, they're good at their shimmers. Their shimmer formula is what they are known for. And I feel like they just, like, missed the boat on the whole situation. And I refuse to buy an eyeshadow palette anymore to keep my collection complete. Like, I don't care if I don't have every Juice Place palette anymore. I'm not spending money on something that I will never get any use out of. The other new releases I feel personally attacked by, can we talk about Kylie Cosmetics reformulated, repackaged burgundy palette and the bronze palette? Like, what the actual fuck is going on here? I actually bought the bronze and burgundy palettes. I've decluttered them since. But why is she... Why? Like, why are you taking palettes that are already in your collection, adding maybe, like, what three or four shades, and reselling the same concept. I don't understand. I don't understand. I think Kylie has run out of eyeshadow palette ideas, and so now she's just like redoing them. So you guys can expect the same palettes, maybe like repackaged. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I think it would have made more sense if she did for different skin tones, like if she did like a bronze light and a bronze deep and still had her original palette and then did a burgundy light and a burgundy deep. Like, I think that would have been like a more interesting concept for her and it's definitely something that's never been done by a big makeup company, as far as I know, like catering to different skin tones, but still keeping that small palette, but giving you the same shades that only still work on the same skin tones makes no sense. And she could have also done like face palettes. Like I think it would have been really cool if she did like a bronze face palette. So the bronzer and a highlight and a blush that would go with or would pair with the bronze palette, but those palettes didn't need to be redone. I. I'm so exhausted, you guys. I just, I just don't understand. Okay, guys, let's talk about the Too Faced Pretty Rich palette. 
First of all, I feel personally attacked by the name of this palette. What the fuck does pretty rich mean? Are they referring to the colors like they're so rich, like they're pretty rich, or they mean like it's nice to have lots of money? Like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like the way Instagram and the way YouTube is set up, it's like one of those really kind of like, I wouldn't call it a necessary evil because nobody needs social media to the point where it's causing depression. But I feel like things like this, like makeup palettes with concepts that are like too rich, like too bougie, like if you don't have this, are you even rich enough? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't. I don't understand the marketing. Um, I'm assuming it means the shade ranges, but I feel or like the, that the shades are like jewel tone, like rich shades, but I just don't get it. And then I recently saw they're coming out with like another shade of their glow job mask. It's like a silver. So it even looks more like a glow job. <sighs> I don't get too faced sometimes. And like, I like some of the stuff they do. I really thought the Gingerbread Spice Palette was, like, fun. It was very holiday. It was friendly. Like, 30-year-olds, 16-year-olds. Everyone could just get around the fire, sing Kumbaya, and use their Gingerbread Spice Palette. But no. They had to do a freaking another glow job. Gross. Like, ugh. What are they trying to teach kids? Are they trying to tell the kids that this is cool, like, glow jobs are cool, and too... Too rich is cool, like, I don't get it. I feel personally attacked. I hate it. I don't want it. I wish it wasn't coming out. The other thing I feel personally attacked by are the Becca x Chrissy Teigen collabs. Oh, I'm sorry. I fell asleep after that. Why? Why are we still launching stuff with a model slash chef who's married to John Legend? Like, I get it, you guys. I love John Legend. He's a very fucking good looking man, okay? I get it. I get it. And Chrissy Teigen is beautiful. She's great. I love it. But my God, how much more support can we give this woman? And they just keep coming out with collabs. I'm so exhausted. Is there nobody else Becca can collab with? Like, is there no one else that Becca can collab with? I actually really like Becca. I love their highlighters. I think they really changed the highlighting game. Originally, you know, before everyone else started making highlighters, that's what Becca was known for. Still probably remember the day that I saw Jaclyn Hill hold up her opal highlight and talk about how great it was and how we all needed it. But I'm getting a little tired of the Chrissy Teigen train. I would like to get off the Chrissy Teigen train. I would like to get on a new train. I'm all about supporting women and I think it's time for Becca to spread their wings and find somebody new to collab with. Okay guys, the next batch of new releases I feel personally attacked by are Zodiac Collections. So there were a few, you know, successful Zodiac Collections. I really like the BH Cosmetics Zodiac palette. I thought that really fucked up the game. It's pretty good pigmentation, works really well with the glitter glue, and it's BH Cosmetics so it's super cheap. It's a nice colorful palette where it's not too intimidating and actually BH Cosmetics has some sick matte shades in there too. There's some really nice army green shades that I think if you didn't want to buy the Melt Gemini palette you might find some colors in there that are similar. So I really like that one but now it's like we've all grabbed a hold of the Zodiac train and we're all riding the Zodiac train and I'm kind of over it. The Wet n Wild Zodiac collection and then they did like the fire and the water and whatever the fuck like I almost bought stuff from it and I was like Karen like no like those eyeshadow palettes like no you're not going to use those eyeshadow palettes they're like a, a compact and there's no dividers between the shades and they're all shimmery and it was like a it just looked like a mess I saw those in person and I'm glad I didn't buy them, but the whole thing, and then I just saw BH Cosmetics is doing more Zodiac, and then uh, Bite Beauty did that lip vault of like all of their Zodiac lippies, and I just, I just can't. I did buy the Kathleen Lights Zodiac collection, but that's a different story for another day because I love Kale Polish, and she makes like bomb ass nail polishes, and I wanted like all of those colors, so I did buy that. Oh, and her Zodiac palette with ColourPop. That was a snooze fest. I bought it and I was like, Ugh. 
Kathleen, come on, like what is this? That shade Pisces, I think it was Pisces, like the green teal shade, pigmentation was bad. Like I was like, fuck this. The packaging was really cute, but yeah, I'm over Zodiac collections. <laughs> I'm over it. I just want something different. <laughs> I think it would be really cool if, yeah, if if we didn't have any more Zodiac things. Like, I hope that the BH thing is the last one and then we're done because I'm ready for, like, some jungle themes. <laughs> but, yeah, Zodiac, I feel like we've rode the Zodiac train. I don't even really know that a lot of people are into the Zodiacs. Like, personally, I don't base, like, all my relationships in real life off of the zodiac like me and my husband are both capricorns like does that mean like like what does that mean like i don't know anyway so yeah i'm over the whole zodiac palette zodiac situation just personally just zodiac canceled okay so another new release i personally feel attacked by are these versali deals so i think they have like four bottles now this new one is called the Perfecting Primer Serum for $54. And I think the reason I don't like Fursali is just the image they portrayed of themselves on social media. It turned into such a fucking, like, I don't know, it was so cheesy because every YouTuber on there was like, Oh my gosh, like, let me take my Versali drops and, like, in slow motion, let me, like, drip it on my face and then let me just take my beauty blender and just, ugh, it was so cheesy. So I feel like I almost kind of, they almost kind of screwed themselves over with that type of marketing because now every time I see it, I'm like, oh, it's just, like, those drops don't actually do anything good. They're just for, like, Instagram, like, they're Instagram drops. Like, you don't actually need that. The next new release that I feel personally attacked by is the Picante Palette by Carity Cosmetics. Now, Carity is definitely a more affordable brand. This palette has 21 shades of yellow, golds, oranges, and berries and is $19.99. Plus, you can get 10% off with the code TREND And I, again, this is another palette where it's like, who doesn't already have all of these eyeshadows? Like, it's all the purples and the bronzes and the, you know, the warm toned eyeshadow palettes. I just feel like we need to see something different. Or better yet, just don't make any more eyeshadow palettes. Like, if you don't have a good idea, just don't make it. Just, just promote the palettes you already have. I feel like YouTube as a whole could just take a little chill pill. I still have palettes from the summer that I need to review, so if you wanted to give me a break and give my wallet a break, I think I'd be okay with it. Makeup companies. I'm just, I'm just, just my opinion. Okay, the next collection I feel personally victimized by, and I've heard so many people talk shit about this collection and I think it's really funny, so I'm also going to talk shit about it because it just goes against everything I love. So, this is the Besame Peter Pan collab. And this is called Mermaid Lagoon. Now, you guys are going to kill me because I can't tell you the last time I saw Peter Pan. Personally, I am not a fan of movies that make me really sad. So all Disney movies, like, I avoid for the most part because I know there's, like, a sad part. And I'm, like, that person at the movie theater, like, crying. I'm so sensitive to movies that I cried during Crazy Rich Asians, okay? Like, not because it was like this pivotal moment in Asian culture. It was because it was like, oh my god, she loves him so much. Her family just doesn't want him to be. Like, that was me. <laughs> so, I'm not a huge fan of Peter Pan. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> this eyeshadow palette collection, this eyeshadow palette has eight shades. And it's $48. That's so expensive. Holy fuck. Now, I haven't actually tried the brand Besame. They're very, like, I don't know. This doesn't really feel like them with the pink packaging. I feel like a lot of their collections are very, like, retro. They have, like, a very 70s vibe. And, like, even when you see, like, their packaging, it's, like, very pinup-esque. So I don't really know where this collection came from. This looks like a MAC limited edition collection to me. I feel like it's very, very 
different and none of it's like calling my name. I don't feel like the people that would buy this collection have the type of money that you would need to buy this collection. I don't know, I think it's weird. I'm sorry, I think it's really weird and I wish they would do something more. I think that went better with their brand and like what their brand portrays. Okay, let's talk about these Stila iridescent thingies. So they, Stila's been milking this cow for a while and I just don't understand how many glitter and glows you can have. I get it. Some people are collectors, so they have like every single shade. But at some point, all the gold glitters just look the same. Like, on your eyes, it's not going to look that much different. And these suckers aren't cheap. They're like 20 something bucks, right? So I have two glitter and glows and two shimmer and glows. And I was so tempted during the VIB sale because they have all these little sets. And I was like, no, Karen, you don't need it because you don't even have the, you don't even wear the two that you have plus so many brands have now copied Stila's idea for liquid eyeshadows especially the glitter ones I even found like a set of three from Morphe the other day for like 12 bucks so do yourself a favor if you love glitter eyeshadows that's fine but look for the cheaper alternatives but and Wild has some Pixie has some like I just mentioned Morphe has some there's so many, oh, ColourPop has them, Flower Beauty has them. Like, you don't need to spend this much money on these anymore. So I love them, but I won't buy them anymore because they're just overpriced. Okay, guys, here is something that has been taunting me for months. It is this fucking Tatcha lip mask. Oh, my God. I wanted to buy it. It's been sold out forever. I don't think it's coming back, but they keep fucking adding it into, like, holiday sets. And it's driving me crazy because I want it, but I can't buy it. And I'm not going to buy a whole set from you, Tatcha, to get it. So if anybody from Tatcha comes across this video, can you please maybe make more lip masks, okay? Because it sounds fucking magical. It looks beautiful. It's in this white jar and it's pink and it just... $30 like I don't need to spend $30 on the lip mask but I want it because it's Tatcha and does Tatcha make anything bad no apparently freaking not so if you can stop just messing with me because I love it and I want it but I can't buy it because they're not in stock okay it's been out of stock forever I think it's a Tatcha website exclusive like why do people do these things to me okay guys I feel like I've been talking forever so I'm gonna end on this product that basically goes against everything I love, which is the fucking environment, okay? This thing from Neutrogena, like who needs freaking Neutrogena wipes package of singles? Where are you going? On what airline are you flying that you're only gonna bring one makeup wipe? Oh my God. First of all, everyone on YouTube probably needs two makeup wipes to take off all the fucking makeup they're putting on, okay? So you'd automatically need like two. And like I have these, like they're the, you can buy these containers, sorry. This container, I love the Neutrogena wipes. And so I have these, you can buy this container from Target and then you just buy the wipes and you, like, like this is it, like this. And then, you can buy the Travel Spice Pack, which has like eight or nine wipes, not very big, maybe like this big, very convenient. But why would you want an individually packaged Neutrogena wipe? Like in what circumstance are you like, hmm, can I just get one wipe? Like, okay, maybe like if you want to like carry one in your purse. I still don't get it. I still don't get why you would need just one wipe. And you couldn't buy like a travel size. Like this is so horrifying for the environment. It just makes me so sad that they had decided that people were so high maintenance that they needed a packaged, one package Neutrogena wipe. And I saw them in store the other day when I was at Ulta and I was like, oh, I kind of want to buy that just so I can like be bougie and like put them all around my house. And I was like, no, like this literally goes against everything I believe in, and I personally feel like it was not a necessary invention. Like, could Neutrogena maybe work on, like, expanding their shade range for their, like, foundations instead of creating more, like, hazardous plastic for the environment? Like, that would be great. 
Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much to Makeup Struggles for collabing with me and sharing this video idea with me. I hope you guys enjoyed some of the products I talked about. If you enjoy any of these products, please don't feel bad. Like this is just me being very hyperbolic and it's just my opinion and it was just a fun video idea. So thank you so much for checking it out. Don't forget to check out Makeup Struggles video. I will link it down below. Go send her some love, obviously. like. Her channel is amazing, like so, so good, so funny, and she always uploads really long videos, so I like sit and watch them on Sundays when I'm cleaning my house or, you know, doing stuff around the house, and she is just so amazing. She is such a great YouTuber and just such a great role model. I think she keeps it real on her channel, which we could always use more of in our YouTube community. So thank you again. I love you so, so much. and. I will see you guys in my next video. If you haven't subscribed to me, please go ahead and do that down below. It would totally make my day. And just so you guys know too, I do upload every other day at like 7 a.m. Central Time. So you get a decent amount of content from me. I'll be back soon with my Sephora haul as well as some review videos for you guys. So I will catch you soon. Bye!